perfect combination of my parents' genetics. My teeth are an exact replica of my father's smile. My eyes the same shade as those found amongst my mother's lap lines. My hair in between my mother's jet black and my father's light brown. The curls are a gift from my grandmother. The extra hair on my face is a gift from my mother. My mother looks like her grandfather. Her sister was their mother's daughter, all French Canadian, all pale skinned, all white hair. My mother looked like her grandfather. Dark hair, brushing tan shoulders, her nose an exact replica of his. When she was a child, he gave them the stories of her people. He gave her the stories of their people. Legends passed from one wrong to another. When I was a child, I didn't know I could ask for these stories. I knew my great grandfather was Romani, but I didn't know what that meant. In my small rural hometown, I was my father's daughter. And when I tried to learn more about our heritage, tried to educate myself and others about the suffering faced by my great grandfather's people, it didn't matter because I was still my father's daughter. And then I went to Europe, a year spent in a country only vaguely part of my origins, and I became a bundle of questions. Questions about my accent, questions about my family. Where were your parents from? Where were your grandparents from? Where was anyone from? And I realized on French soil, I am my mother's daughter. <laughs> Telling them that I am an amalgamation of the British Isles with a little bit of French thrown in does not appease them. They want to comb through my origin, find the piece of me that makes me different, find who gave me this hair on my upper lip, my dark brows. I don't want to tell them that my great grandfather was Romani. It has only been a year since his people were forced from this country. This country I am growing to love. These people I am growing to love. And I was 17 and I didn't know how to confront the underbelly of hatred. I didn't have the words for it. Instead, I learned to evade questions in a language of my own. I pretended to be my father's daughter. In the years since returning home, Europe has grown hostile. Its history has reared its ugly head to sink its claws into its present. Fear of the outsider ripples across the continent. Mm. I still don't know if I have the words to confront that. Mm. But I have taught myself a new language. A language for this country. This country where ignorance of his people is more prevalent than hatred towards them. Though that tide seems to be terrifyingly shifting, the ripples are reaching us. But all the same, I have taught myself not to scream at all the Instagram handles with Gypsy in them. Mm. Taught myself to politely explain that, hey, Gypsy is a slur and maybe we shouldn't be saying gypped in everyday conversation. Taught myself to civilly debate my own existence, defend my great grandfather, argue that the propaganda that convinced him his children would be safer white shouldn't be on our stages or on our screens, shouldn't be shared across social media as if that Nazi campaign ever has a grain of truth. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's listening yet, but I will continue to perfect this language. Maybe one day I will scream it again. Maybe one day my siblings will speak it with me when they are finally comfortable with the hair on their upper lip and between their bushy brows. Until then, I will remain my mother's daughter.